Time to talk some NASCAR, though. Daytona 500. Cody Zeeb joins us. Follow him on Twitter at Husker underscore Zeeb. Writer for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network and co-host for NASCAR Gambling and F1 Gambling Podcast. Cody, I do a show here on the network at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Send it in. I have one of my best friends on who's at Daytona right now covering. So I was talking a little bit about it with him today. So you know, I know a little bit, but I'm excited to get another perspective. A driver we did not talk about was A.J. Allmendinger. I want to get your thoughts on his chances this weekend at the Great American Race. Yes, very jealous of your friend. I wish I was there uh, this weekend as well. It's going to be – might be a little wet, so hopefully uh, he avoids that. But going to be a super good race for the Daytona 500. A.J. Allmendinger, definitely a guy that I've got my eye on coming into this weekend. Um, you know, for people that know NASCAR – well, just to kind of set up, I guess, betting on the Daytona 500, um, it's different than when you get into the later in the season, uh, we have the more quote unquote normal racetracks where it's a lot easier to bet on. Uh, Daytona 500, it's a super speedway style of racing. They're in a big pack. They're all drafting together. You've seen the spectacular crashes. Those are always on this type of racing. And so that can wipe out the bets, but also it can produce a lot of opportunities to grab longer shot stuff. So this is the type of race where it's fun to bet on because you kind of go into it just really knowing that anything can get swept away in an accident in, in that, you know, in a split second, but gives you the opportunity to hit on a lot of bigger bets, a lot of bigger numbers too. So that's a lot of fun. Um, when it comes to AJ Allmendinger, he's known for being a road course guy. Uh, he's the all-time winningest leader in NASCAR's Xfinity series and road course wins. He's got plenty of cup series wins as well. A lot of people don't realize also extremely good on the super speedway style of racing um, and continues to show up and do well, continues to be disrespected every time we come here by the books. Uh, last year, he raced in the Daytona 500, uh, finished in sixth place. Hadn't raced in the 500 since 2018 before that, but he was third place in that one um, and a couple of top tens prior to that, another third place back in 2017 when he ran it as well. The NASCAR Xfinity Series, which is like uh, AAA baseball basically for NASCAR, um, he's been very solid racing at Daytona there. His last four races, four top five finishes. So I've got my eye on AJ Allmendinger uh, to get a top five this weekend. That number is at six to one. I think he'll be a, a really solid bet to, to get into the top five at the end of the day. Cody, 8.3% of the tickets at BetMGM are on Bush to win. Who is your bet to win it all on Sunday? Yeah, well, I'm actually on, on Kyle Bush as well. Um, this is actually a, a pretty crazy way to look at all this. If you want to get into the conspiracy things, it's kind of fun. So February 18th is when the race is scheduled this year uh, on Sunday. You go all the way back to February 18th is when the race was run in 2001. Dale Earnhardt was killed that day driving a Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet. The next time uh, they raced there, I think it was 2007, Kevin Harvick won in an RCR Chevrolet. The next time they raced on that date, I believe it was 2014, Austin Dillon, one in an RCR Chevrolet. This will be the next time that we race at Daytona on February 18th. All signs point to uh, Kyle Busch in that RCR Chevrolet. Also, he's in the number eight car. If you look back 10 years ago, Dale Jr. won in the 88 car. Look back 20 years ago, Dale Jr. won in the eight car. So uh, all the RCR signs, all the number eight signs point to Kyle Busch this weekend. And not to mention, he's also very good at this. Uh, he's two-time champion of the sport. He's got over 200 wins between the top three series in NASCAR, one of the greatest of all time. This is kind of the one thing that's eluded him, and he's been close. He was leading at the end of 500 miles last year. Uh, late caution flag sent the race into overtime, and he did not win. I think maybe he'll get his revenge this year and, uh, and get that. So we're out in Anaheim for UFC 298. We got a uh, great card. And certainly the the first kind of match that jumps out to me is Volkanovski. And he's a small favorite in his uh, in his fight. What are your thoughts on Volkanovski and Tapuria? Look, I, first of all, love both of these fighters. And they both have, I mean, I, I can make a case for both of them. But I am surprised to see Alex Volkanovski as such a short favorite of minus 125. Um, I think it's kind of disrespectful because the man has not had any back-to-back -back losses. He, yeah, he has lost two of his last three, but that was against his kryptonite. He's already successfully defended the, fi the, the title five times, and he's defied all odds by beating all the young fighters for a title. Yair Rodriguez, uh, Brian Ortega, Max Holloway. 
So I'm on Alex Volkanovsky here. I absolutely love him to win. And uh, I, I think I think Mark might be on the opposite side of me. I'm not sure. <laughs> I am. We're on the opposite side, so we're going to go head-to-head on this one. But let's take it to the ladies, Minty. Uh, Mackenzie Dern, step up in competition, lost to Jessica Andrade, looks to bounce back against Amanda Lemos. Lemos opened as a big favorite. Money's come in on the other side on Dern. Do you have a bet on this one? You know, I do have a small bet on this one because I know Amanda Lemos is typically a finisher, and she is scary to go up against. She's a small favorite here, but... Mackenzie Dern has only been an underdog or closed as an underdog once in her UFC career. She's won that fight and she does not get finished often in her four defeats in the UFC. She's only gotten finished once. I am sprinkling a little bit on Mackenzie Dern here, but I am going to hold my breath because that that's going to be a tough one. If she can get this to the ground, I think she has a really good shot at this. But ooh, Amanda Lemos is powerful, so anything could happen in this one. What about the all-star game itself. The Western Conference is favored by two and a half. Obviously, we got a high total. Nobody plays defense. So are you doing anything in the game or are you just looking at the MVP market for the all-star game? So for the game, right? Now, this is going to be, this may or may not be funny to some, but for me, right? Doc Rivers coaching the East and the way that the Milwaukee (laughs) Bucks have been playing their last nine or 10 games, I would probably lean towards the West in terms of choosing which team I would pick to win. Doc Rivers hasn't really done a good job, and he probably shouldn't be coaching. They probably should have gave it to someone else. I get that Adrian Griffin was, you know, obviously the coach for Milwaukee Bucks at the time, and so Doc's the replacement in this and that. But I think because Doc Rivers is coaching the East, that the West, led by LeBron James and the crew, will come out on top for the Western Conference and win. And that leads me to my pick for MVP in the NBA All-Star game. I love it, Zach. LeBron takes these LeBron also takes these All-Star games very serious. So I definitely like the West. Yes. Um, who do you think is gonna be the MVP here in the All-Star game? Oh man, the smooth criminal himself. And that is Shy Gilders Alexander, SGA. I, it's like plus 1400 on BetMGM right now. So it's a nice, juicy number. And I will say this. I know that Anthony Edwards came out and he was talking about how, you know, Chris Finch is obviously going to be the coach for the West. And so he likes threes and layups and SGA. He likes to work that mid range area. So I don't know how Chris Finch is going to abs- like necessarily feel about SGA coming up, shooting mid range pull ups and get into the rim and get into the lane and get this crossover going. But that's who I got for MVP. It might be a sleeper pick. I know he's probably way down on the list. But I like SGA at like plus 1,400, somewhere around there for uh, MVP of the All-Star game. I'm a Flyers fan. I know it's not our division to win, but very happy with what we've seen this year so far. But I don't want to see the Rangers win the division either. Canes are plus 180 to catch the Rangers in the standings before the end of the regular season. Is there any value there? Yeah, I actually think there's tremendous value there. We're starting to see this Rangers team kind of hit Um, they're doing great with points, but we're seeing some panicking in some aspects where if Shesterkin's between the pipes, you don't know which way the game is going to to swing, and they're relying very heavily on their veterans. If it's not for Chris Kreider pulling through or um, Adam Fox doing what he does so well, sometimes the game is kind of left in lull for this team, and they're struggling to generate an offense and get much going in first periods. They're picking things up and having these ridiculous second periods. I think last night they had four goals in the second period, and they've been very consistent in that sense. But the Hurricanes, they're starting to get the components together. Their biggest thing is um, Kachekov. His style of playing between the pipes, he plays a little far ahead, and guys with speed can beat him and get pucks past him. If they make these adjustments when it comes to goaltending or you know, if Anderson has a chance to get back in the lineup, then you're looking at a team that's now locking down how many pucks get past them. They've now gotten below allowing three goals per game, and their scoring is getting higher. Their special teams is getting sharper, and they're really good in the face-off circle. So they're really starting to kind of check a lot of boxes to where they can pass a Rangers team that is very fiery and has a lot to offer, but is kind of hitting some inconsistent streaks that could catch up with them in these next 30 days. Now, Casey, speaking of those Flyers, they're taking on the Devils tomorrow in one of those stadium series games, and they've obviously been doing this for for a good amount of years. 
anything like we should know betting wise, like difference between the outdoor games to the indoor games? Are there any like trends? Like, are they lower scoring? Is there more like penalties? Is there any advantage to take when the games are outside opposed to inside? Yeah, I'd say definitely usually on the lower scoring side, aside from what we saw in the Winter Classic for the most part. um, And plus, going against the Flyers right now, they're one of the top defensive teams in the league. So something to be excited about, Mark. Um, But also penalty kill wise, I mean, they lead the league in shorthanded goals, which is not an easy thing to do. So just seeing what they can do defensively, then you're going against a Devils team that high offensive power, but they still let up a lot of goals. I think that this is going to end up being high scoring, which you can tend to see sometimes with outdoor. And then the penalties, you know, you're playing outside, you're playing that freestyle of hockey. Uh, You're going to see a little bit more looseness when it comes to uh, controlling your stick. Um, You're going to see a little bit more temperament, especially when you're playing the Flyers. Like any we got anybody that plays against Torts team is in for a physical matchup. So I would definitely check out the penalties. Special teams should be a huge factor. And going against this Flyers defense right now is uh, a work of art. Travis Konecki has been tremendous. He's one of my favorite guys. I wanted him to be an all-star last year. He finally got the chance. And he's been so consistent. Um, Jack Hughes, who's now starting to chirp a lot more. He's always in the point factor there. Um, Brat is amazing. And to to Foley is one of my favorite players who ended up now hanging out over by the Devils. So I definitely like the high scoring. I like the special teams to be impactful. Check out points when it comes to the power play uh, for the Devils. I love it. And quick betting fact for everybody. Flyers are 5-0 when I'm in attendance, and I am going to be in attendance at that stadium <laughs> series game. So excited about that one. But it'll be the first road game, so who knows.